in 67 we said goodbye to our engines we were really heartbroken and uh, 20 years later I came back and started driving engines again somebody had preserved them and I was able to drive them again it was wonderful People think train spotter and they think of funny little man with big big coke bottle glasses, you know, sitting at the end of a platform jostling with himself and writing down numbers. There's uh, so many different characters here. I mean you've met you've met Andy. I've never been much on the technical information of when it was and when it wasn't, you know, created. Sometimes you get plaques on the side and somebody comes up and says, Oh, what's that? Like, oh, I don't know, hang on a minute. And I walk to the front and go, 953. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember everything. We have been known to get into some trouble. I think that some of the uh, the older lot are a lot more serious and less fun, or they just as fun. It depends on the person. Some of them are the same as us. Other ones are a bit more serious. You just have to sort of think before you do something. Some of the older people as to whether they, which way they're going to take it. Most of them are quite good and they fight back. <laughs> what about Craig? Um. On a big engine, you can have a hundred corks to remove. You'd be allowed about an hour and a quarter to oil up an engine like that. Mm -hmm. The big ends carry about a pint of oil. It should last about 300 miles. Right. But um, there are things that go wrong sometimes and the oil doesn't last the time it should. Yeah, it's amazing to think of all this stuff flying around at high speed all relying on the driver having done his work properly at four o'clock in the morning when he got the engine ready. You can have a laugh with Clyde, but you can't push it too far. Is he so serious? Yeah, I don't think he'd be one for a water fight. <laughs> yeah. I'll get a feeder and then I'll start oiling around. And that's the driver's job. I've been doing the farmer's job up till now. I'll do the driver's job next. Onto another string of teeth. Steam rail something you wanted to do from, from childhood or? No, not really. It was probably inevitable that I joined the railway, that I was interested in trains. I basically got into this back in 94 when my parents got a bit fed up with me sitting at home watching telly all weekend. That lot in there persuaded me. They persuaded you? They persuaded me. Not only did I live backing onto the railway line at West Croydon, but my school also face the railway line, the same bit of track. What we used to do, we used to work over the sawmills over the road. Right. And we used to bring all the old wood over to light the engines for warming up. Yeah. So I used to walk in and take the mick, like there was no tomorrow. They had a mate that come down here and was learning to be a fireman. Uh, so they thoughtfully woke me up at half past four in the morning, uh, got me a load of old rubbishy clothes and told me to go with this friend of theirs. So they turned around and said, well, you're so good, why don't you get on the end of that crane and pull it? So I did, and sort of, it sort of become a bit of a, a bit of a mick take out between me and them. And uh, I've kind of been here ever since, really. I just joined just for the crack of it, really, and uh, I've been here ever since. You crawl into the machinery of the engine, you slid in amongst all the bits and pieces, nice and dirty and greasy. You had two or three other 15-year-olds with you and nothing happier than that, whistling and singing and talking and rubbing and cleaning the engine. So 
So you say you learn something new every day? You do, yeah. You learn anything today? Um, yeah, not to fall off the front of an engine. <laughs> <laughs> but then I always do that anyway. <laughs> Well done, Chris. Keep going. Yeah, well. No slacking. Never see me slack. He never does any work whatsoever. He only wears that coat because it looks dirty. <laughs> Darling, why is it funny? Right. I always never take the mic off. You've got the yeah. pit behind you. <laughs> yeah, I know I have. Yeah, right on. Be careful what you say. Good job you got me on the side because you'll get stuck. <laughs> get and pick that wood up. See what I have to see what I have to contend with. You find that I'm fat, you're as bad as down you are. I can just about fit through that hole. Spears. What interests you the most about this job? Um it's the mechanics of it all, really. It's it's just a challenge, you know. It's just a challenge. The um, engines are not easy to make do what you want them to do, and you have to work hard to do it. I think it's just the sort of power and power and physics of it all, really. So, you know, this, this this water, which you get really really hot, that turns into a gas, can shove around a bit of metal that six people can't move very fast at all. And you get tired at the end of it and fed up and sick of them. The next day you're raring to go again. Yeah, it's, a, it's the power thing. Mm. That and there's a lot of pyromaniac involvement in it. You know, where else can you go for a hobby and set a fire or something? Like that? Right. The sound of them, the smell of them, the feel of them, the rhythm of them. And at night when you shut them down, they creak and hiss and rumble. And you sit on them in the dust and put your feet up against the boiler and just contemplate life. And that's nice too.